being made whole, body, mind, and soul. The obesity epidemic. There is an obesity epidemic in uh, the United States. And this epidemic seems to be plaguing the African-American community, especially African-American women. <clears throat> Four out of five African-American women are overweight or obese. The Center for Disease Control describes the top four killers of African-American women as being heart disease, stroke, cancer, and diabetes. One of the leading risk factors to developing one of these diseases is obesity. According to the Office of Minority Health, African-American women have the highest rates of being overweight and obese compared to other groups. Hot topics. One hot topic is diabetes. And what they're saying is that if you're diabetic or if you're prone to di diabetes because of um, hereditary, is hereditary meaning um, multiple people in your family have diabetes such as uh, mother, father, or your paternal or maternal grandparents. Nine out of 10 people newly diagnosed with type two diabetes are overweight. Heart disease. Another top four killer of African-American women can be defined as a number of conditions affecting the heart and the blood vessel of the heart. According to the Black Women's Health Imperative, one woman dies every minute from heart disease. Black women suffer rates of heart disease that are twice as high as other groups. Factors that contribute to these disparities are high rates of overweight and obesity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and limited awareness of risk. Prevention. What can you do? Well, there are several things that you can do on your own and the CDC describes these things as eating a healthy diet, maintaining a healthy weight, exercising regularly, and not smoking. Fighting obesity mile by mile. One of the, um, <clears throat> as a part of this assignment, I felt it was time for myself to get out and get active and um, starting to exercise regularly and I wanted to find a group to do it with. I think one of the key uh, factors in being success it, successful is having a support group. Well, I found a group called Black Girls Run. I've always wanted to run. I never thought it was something that I could do, but when I met this group, they completely changed my mind about that. It was a crisp winter evening on the south side of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, a group of women gathered together for a four-mile run. Anyone is invited to join. Um, the name of the group, again, is Black Girls Run Charlotte. And Black Girls Run is a national women's, women's running group with over 60 groups running nationwide. Tori Carey and Ashley Hicks created the group in 2009 in an effort to provide a solution to the issue of, of obesity in the black community and among black women. It is not an exclusively black running group, but it is exclusively a women's running group. Um, there was a unique energy about the group. I felt as if every single woman was gently nudging you to be a healthier you. I'm not sure if this unique energy is a result of the obesity epidemic plaguing the black community, but it is evident that this group of women is intent on fighting it by running mile by mile. If you're interested in joining, you can go to the group's Facebook page and click you like it and you'll get an email quickly. They respond pretty fast. So if you're looking for a group to join and you're looking for a group to get out and exercise with, this is an alternative for you. Um, and like I said, again, if you're interested in going and you would like to join, go to facebook.com groups, black girls run Charlotte. And all you have to do is like the page and one of their ambassadors will be in touch with you. Another thing that you can do on your own is eat a healthy diet. Um, basically what they're saying about eating a healthy diet 
is consuming 2,000 calories a day, the minimum suggested intake for moderately active adults. Your diet should contain seven to eight servings of grains, four to five servings of vegetables and fruits, two to three servings of milk or dairy products, two or few servings of meat and beans, and two to three servings of healthy oils each day. They say to limit your intake of sweets, nuts, and high-fat foods to five or fewer servings a week. I thought that was very key. Some of us eat high-fat foods and sweets every day when your serving should be limited to five or fewer servings a week. Cooking with Urban Angel, spicy salmon dish. This is me, cooking a healthy meal for a change. some herbs and spices along with some olive oil. Healthy alternative to using salt and the breading. In one tablespoon of minced garlic and you're going to saute it in your olive oil. The curry powder and you want two teaspoons of this for mustard seed and chili peppers and you're going to we're going to add the ginger saute your onions with your garlic and you've added your chili powder with your mustard seed your ginger you're going to go ahead and place your salmons inside the skillet and you're going to let them cook for about 10 minutes cover the dish let it simmer and voila don't that look beautiful spicy salmon bon appetit ladies we have to start eating healthier and we definitely have to start moving Zumba instructors, and we are here uh, just finishing up an awesome Zumba class. Help finding a Zumba class, you can go to www.getyourzumbaon.com to find a class near you. We need to get out and encourage everyone, even ourselves and our children, to get moving. So find something you like to do and do it. So that was um, a Zuma class. That Today I'm going to cook for you a meal that is low in fat, if you're into high in protein, uh, high and good aerobics. It's cooked in olive oil, and it's going to be tasty and packed with a great flavor. I liked it, but it was a little bit. I'm going to use some herbs and spices along with some olive oil. Healthy alternative to using salt and the bread. It was fun. I love the music. And the instructors were great. Yeah. So one tablespoon of minced Getting garlic, and you're gonna saute it in your something you like to do. The curry powder, and you want two teaspoons so of this. You know you or to do mustard seed and chili your, peppers. Um, <clears throat> your healthy lifestyle. You're gonna it's add the ginger. I guess that's uh, key. Saute your to, onions with your garlic, and you've added you your chili powder with your mustard you seed, to your ginger. You're going to go ahead and place your salmons inside the skillet and you're going to let them cook for about 10 minutes. Cover the dish, let it simmer, and voila. Don't that look beautiful? Spicy salmon. Also, uh, prostate exams, pap smears, blood work, um, and EKGs. I regularly get a pap smear every year. Um, I also have blood work done uh, every year just because um, of some of the hereditary issues I have with uh, diabetes and heart disease. So it's something that I try to make sure I do each year. Faith and healing. Now, this is a topic that we don't talk a lot about. We focus a lot on the physical fitness aspect of being whole and being healthy and we leave out some other things, but I found some really good research that has significant correlation between faith, well-being, and healing. Um, I thought I would share that with you just because I'm a faith person 
And I'm not saying that to offend anyone who may read my publications, but it's just a part of who I am. And I find that it does help me um, sustain a certain outlook about things, especially doing something that I'm not accustomed to doing every day, and that's working out. Um, Check out the studies. There's six studies on faith. Uh, One, what happens to the brain when people are in the attitude of prayer and faith? Um, The other one was spirituality and cancer patients. Um, it determined the quality of life during care. And it found, the study found that those with faith had a better quality of life than those without it. Uh, another study is patients with cancer can experience better quality of life when their spiritual needs are supported by a medical team. Just a study out there that shows data that supports when the medical team is respectful or honors the faith or belief system of the patient, <clears throat> they find that there's a better quality of life. Competency and ethics looks at how faith and spirituality spirituality can help with coping during times of illness and injury. Uh, the last two are clinical psychology uh, study looking at how faith can actually help protect patients against the symptoms of depression. And the last one also looks at faith and using it as a way to fight depression. Well, our conversation, some of the conversations I have with you all online via Facebook and Twitter were that uh, the healthy food options. Uh, Someone brought up that when you look at African-American, predominantly African-American communities, um, especially inner city communities, there are not a lot of options as far as healthy food. Most of the restaurants uh, in those areas are fast food. And also the quality of vegetables and uh, a variety of different produce and fruits uh, available at the grocery stores in those communities are not are not up to par compared to other places. Um, another conversation that I saw was a biggie for some of you was group support. It seems like that's kind of the thing. It is it's, it is it it works if you have people supporting you in your fitness initiatives you increase your rate of being successful. If you're having people just encouraging you to to keep doing it, to keep moving forward, it seems to increase success rates among people. Those are some things that I want to explore a little bit more. What are some cultural obstacles? We had a conversation about a black women in their hair. And um if you're not black, you may not understand, but some women, black women invest a lot of money in their hair and a lot of time in their hair. And I guess the conversation was, you know, sweating and um, basically, <laughs> I guess basically that investment that you spend on your hair is pretty much gone down the toilet once you work out because of the nature of the activity that you're doing. And we were talking about going natural. I have found a number of women who have went natural, meaning no chemicals or products in their hair, just their na- the natural texture of their hair, just because they wanted to work out. So those are some of the conversations we had um, within the last several weeks surrounded around this health issue topic and obesity. Thanks for everyone who took the time to share on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Look for more publications because they are coming. Major campaigns. One of the things I want to focus on is access to healthy food options, uh, comparing healthy food options in low-income, middle-income, and wealthy communities and how they're similar and how they're different. Polling the streets. This is where I will be interviewing a diverse group of African-American women that are at different places on the health continuum 
Some people may be just getting started. Some people may be may have done this for quite a, long, a while and they have some information to share. Some of you may be in the middle where you're still trying to reach your goals. Um, <clears throat> so I would love to get out and talk to those women and see what they have to say. When should you be screened? This is very important, especially if you are struggling with issues of not having health insurance because health screening, health screening can be expensive. Um, there are some options out there, especially in certain communities. They have um, health screening events, festivals, clinics um, at local organizations. And I want to provide some information about who's giving free health screening, uh, especially in the local Charlotte area, and have that information available for you. <clears throat> 